Wait, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? You leave this for two days. That, that's supposed to be. All right. So I was just on the lathe, and I made a couple of these little guys. So nice little chunk of tubing. Lay her down so she nice flush ends, and that little chunk's gonna go in the opposite side to this little guy. So you can see now that I have my all my brackets made, I need to start reinforcing them. So I'm gonna reinforce these ones by adding a tube in between them so that they can't bend. And then I'm also gonna have a bracket on the back side. And then off here, I'll probably have an angled bracket. So this should be nice and strong and like work great. Once again, the lathe comes in handy just to make things nice and clean. All right, so I've been modifying the grill, cutting it up a bunch so that it will fit about eight inches or six inches lower. No, about seven inches lower than where it usually sat. And I got it to fit just about perfect. I'm just about to tack weld the grill into its new final home for the rest of its life. I have the hood cut. I need to work on the engine a bit to get it mounted up in there. I went from a four inch to a six inch. So big difference up front and then I'll be going at a little bit lower of a height now so I can actually put the engine in. I gotta do a little bit more bracing up in here and then we'll drop it in, bolt it down and start figuring out a drive shaft in. Whew, so many things coming together. I'm just getting it all done because uh, well, I wanna go ride this thing. This thing's freaking awesome, I love it. Alright, so I got the engine bay all grinded down here, and I'm starting to work on the drive shaft. So, what am I using? I pulled this off of a Bulin's G9 mower, thinking if I can rework this setup so that this end is on this end, I'd have a pretty decent start to a good setup with a nice bearing spot here, and uh, able to put something in down the way here. Anyways, I'm going to start working with this piece of uh, equipment here and see if I can get it to work in this new mower. This is turning out just way too perfect, but so I got the six inch pulley on the front and then that will drive this drive shaft, which I got it to be able to flip around and it's so perfect. This end, this is just set up because this is for a PTO setup. It has the right end to go on to the inside of the tractor. So it has the right three quarter inch uh, socket end to go onto the input of the gearbox and then it has the right spline so that I can just flip this whole assembly around. So now that I have a pulley over here to get driven, nice big bearing area that works freaking awesome. It's just got a little bit of play, but I'm just gonna machine a washer. So the only thing I think I need to do is extend this drive shaft and we're good to go. All right, so I'm mocking up the engine in here and like, let me just say, this just looks way better. Let's get this engine maybe bolted in, get the drive shaft set up, bolted in, go for a test drive. All right. The next day has started, and last night I did some research finally on my little 10 horsepower diesel. I figured out what I need to do to get it all running and what I need to clean and stuff. I did pop the oil and there was water in it, so I am going to have to open it up and clean out that. So we'll figure that out along the way, but I now know what I have and I can order some parts so that I can get it running all nice and good. Actually having the motor installed on the plate you can see that since the frame has been re-welded at a different angle somewhat of a tilted angle the engine actually sat at somewhat of an angle so with the drive shaft I would actually have to have it cocked up way too much which put the drive shaft at a weird angle so yesterday before I get finished up I made these weld-in motor mounts welded up bolts on the back half here and these will get welded at an angle on the top of here so that the engine will actually sit level. I'll weld those fully in and then the engine can just get unbolted from those studs. So that's the next thing I'm going to be doing is cocking this engine up, tack welding those in and then fully welding them in and then we're on our way. I'm pretty stoked with the new design here and it should work great and it should make it for easy unbolting. You just got to pop the four nuts off of that and then pull the whole engine upwards. So unreal. Let's get that done and on to the next thing. Whoo -hoo. All right, starting to get some more work in here. So I got my two flat rulers on the back side of my pulley held on there with a couple little clamps there so that I know where the back side is and I know both sides need to be flush up against there. Now, you're probably seeing this and going, 
What the hell, Riley? You pulled that out of the junkyard? Yes, we did. Because we're on the uh, driveline situation here, I figured why not use more driveline parts? It works great. It will bolt into two of my holes, and then I can drill out this third one if I need. And then I welded in a chunk of DOM tubing, tossed her in the lathe, turned her down, and that will get welded onto the frame down here. And then I can unbolt the whole setup here. I also took this apart, looked inside. I can replace two bearings in here, which is just so nice. But they work great. Plus, it has a grease nipple on the backside, so I can always grease it. And then that little bit of shaft play, I got rid of it with uh, adding in some uh, mach machine washers into there. So, next thing I'm going to be doing is actually welding this on to the frame and then getting this alignment perfect or very close to So you guys are looking down on it. I'm looking at it from the side. And if someone else was looking here, they'd be looking at it from another angle. Anyways, I made this little chunk of square tubing. And this isn't going to be my only brace. I am going to build off of here, maybe off of here, down to whatever tubing I build here. But I made this little piece here with some M10 uh, rib nuts here. So I used my rib nut gun. If you guys don't know what a rib nut gun is, it is basically just uh, collapsible or pressable nuts. So you just drill a hole. Press this in, use your tool, you clamp it in, and boom, presses the nut in there just like that. This is going to get securely snugged in right here with some M10 bolts. I drilled out the housing here so that I could hold M10s because they're nice and beefy. I used M12s for these ones just because the uh, driveline stuff, you always want to be definitely on the more beefy side of things than uh, anything else. So now with my square tubing under here, I'm gonna run a tube or two tubes under here to both sides of the frame and then weld it to this support so that I can literally just unbolt these two, unbolt this and pull this whole assembly out. Anyways, I'm gonna keep working away here. All right, more progress and it's happening fast. So I decided to go with one tube, got a nicely bent tube already. So cut that and that's gonna go in right there. But as you can see, I'm running into some clutch issues. So I need to rework this clutch setup so that it's not so close to uh, hitting everything. So I'll just be running a cable setup in here so I don't gotta worry about running linkages and shit inside the frame. Unreal setup. You guys will be seeing exactly how the cable setup will be working once I get further along, but I just wanted to make sure before I weld these tubes in that I can still get my clutch into position. Come together unreal and like if you are wondering why the belt or like why these look out of line this belt just has a uh, natural warp in it kind of thing like that so once she spins she'll spin better but I mean if you actually look at the pulleys they're unreal I got it pretty damn freaking even and that's the nice other nice thing about running a belt is it doesn't have to be 100% dead on you can have that tiny little bit of play in there if you're not perfect I'm not saying it's not perfect just saying you can be unlike a chain where if you're a little bit out it makes a huge difference on the stress that the chain actually takes so anyways pulley setup I'm loving it it works way better don't have to worry about your parts breaking unreal okay let's keep going people Another beautiful day to start. Wait, what the hell? What the hell's going on here? You leave this for two days. I ran out of gas in the well, so I couldn't work on this thing. Like two days. What the hell happened here? What the fridge? What the hell am I doing? What the heck? Isn't that the back half of this thing? Where's... Oh, no. All right, now some of you may or may not have noticed, and it took me this long for me to notice, and actually thankfully for Tony, he was over just discussing the drivetrain and realized that with me mounting the motor this way, I spin my whole drivetrain three gears reverse and one gear forward. So I spin it all backwards, which sucks. And uh, well, I just jumped right into this build. This is how I want the motor, so I just started getting into it. And I just didn't think of that simple thing. We've all been there, it happens, we gotta work our way past it. Now, 
As you can see, I can knock off the whole back end of the mower pretty easy. It's four bolts onto the frame part here. And then, uh, well, that's literally it. So I will be reinforcing that because I mean, that needs to be more. Other than that, I'm thinking this is the, this is the input gearbox. So it has a one to one ratio and has two out or one input and two outputs the way, you, whatever way you want to think about it. The idea is I think is I can flip this 180 degrees so that I'm actually spinning it backwards so that this shaft's on that side and spinning the opposite way so that I can get my right rotation to the transaxle. I'm hoping that's the way it's actually going to work out. I'm hoping I can literally just swap this and it's all going to work, but it never will be like that. So we'll see what kind of stuff I get into once that happens, but I just, I didn't want to swap, turn the engine around. I just, too much work to do all that. And then to extend all this uh, drive shaft situation just won't fit up in there. And it's just going to be too much of a mess to redo that. So I'm hoping I can do this. Anyways, let's get back to some work. Lots more work to be done. And uh, hopefully we don't find any more too big uh, issues with the setup. But that's, if you guys don't know me, that's just kind of the way I work, which does, isn't always the greatest. But I mean, I just got this thing in. I had some time. There's space in the garage right now. Musty's running absolutely mint. Uh, the Fords were going together pretty damn good. I'm waiting for parts on track still. So it was just like, boom, let's get this going. I've done so much in such a short period of time that my brain's just been thinking about so many different things all at once that I didn't think about this small little thing. And this is just the way I wanted the motor to run. So either way, we'll figure it out. We'll get it done. Let's get to it though, because we need to get on it fast because this needs to get out romping like in the next couple weeks. Oh, okay, too much talking. Let's put this thing back together figure out this gearbox, wherever it is going to go.